Happy Sabbath, everybody. Thank you, Kevin. A man who needs no introduction gets one. Thanks. Appreciate that. That's all good. <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> listen up. Funny how you, when you say that, people actually like stop and listen, right? So uh, this is about um, having ears to hear God and how we... Um, how we hear God and how we talk to God. One of the most difficult questions that any believer has to contemplate is whose voice are you following? Whose voice are you following? How do you know that it's the voice of God? You're familiar with your own voice and your own thoughts in your conscience. And early in your walk, you know, the knocks on your conscience are lots of times may be inspired by the Spirit, but they're, lots of times they're yourself trying to think things through. But of course, as you show forth maturity, you check your instincts and your feelings versus the Word of God and verse sound instructions from elders who are based in the Word of God. You know, elders, uh, parents, those type of folks. God gives us them for a purpose. And we check that and we listen to the word of God and we can start to hear his voice and, and it makes a distinct sound for us. And we know when that's the voice of God. Now, if you're struggling with that, maybe uh, the next couple of messages will help you in that. As we, as we mature in Christ, the contents of the Bible become something we chew on more than just in bits and pieces. You begin to hear that voice. And you can test it that it's his by the words in the book. As we become familiar through that gift of the Holy Spirit that he gives us, that voice is being imprinted on our hearts and our minds by the one who wrote the script. And that's awesome, right? Reprogramming, deprogramming, whichever way you want to go with that. And it takes time to develop good ears. So don't be discouraged if you don't hear what you want to hear. And at the same time, don't be discouraged if you hear what you don't want to hear. Okay? Make sense? So in Genesis chapter 22, pick it up in verse 15, the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because you have done this thing and have not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy, thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So it was an angel of the Lord speaking in proxy for the Lord, speaking by the command of the Lord. And he's telling Abraham, you're going to be blessed because you obeyed God's voice. How did Abraham know that was God's voice? He was attuned in to that frequency, if you will, of God by his knowledge of him and by God's revelation of himself to Abraham. And that comes forth in obedience. And there's kind of a circle there. The more obedient you are, the more you're gonna, he's going to give you because you'll be listening to him. In Genesis 26.5, we know this verse very well, right? Commandment keepers all know this. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. He obeyed my voice. He knew that voice. In Exodus 19.5, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Right? Sometimes you could hear God in an audible way, be it through an angel, right? Because the New Testament says nobody's ever seen God's shape or heard his voice. So we know it's either through incarnate Christ or through angels, right? But that does not make it not the word of God, right? If your lawyer goes to court and speaks for you, he's got your power of you know, attorney, so if you will, and he speaks on your behalf, and he speaks with all your authority. A, a police officer pulls you over, 
Hopefully it was a mistake. And he's got all authority invested in him to do those actions, right? Some people don't want to hear what God has to say to them. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? Exodus 20, 18 and 19. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood far off. And they said to Moses, you speak with us and we'll hear you, but don't let God speak with us lest we die. So they had a fear of God, but did they have knowledge of God and who he is? This is the God who just saved them out of Egypt. Merciful, full of grace, truth, promised, made them promises. Right? But yet they were afraid of that voice. Now, at least they could distinguish that was God's voice. Let's give them that. But they didn't. And that was very true of Israel constantly. They would not listen. That's why God always called them stiff-necked. Right? They were stubborn. They would say, God, what, do you, what should I do? And then they would hear God's voice, and they'd be like, yeah, yeah I'm going to do this. Right? <laughs> it wasn't a laughing matter. <laughs> Numbers 14, 21 through 23, But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. Does God change? How many times do you think you could tempt him before he leaves you to rot in the wilderness? You don't want to find out. Amen, brother. So that's having a proper reverence and fear. But if you have an understanding of who God is, your obedience, because of that fear, becomes pure reverence to him. And you understand him, and he reveals more and more of himself to you. But we have to be able to listen to his voice when we hear it. Otherwise, he's going to stop talking to us, right? If so, so anybody else, human to human, you know, they keep talking, and you don't ever answer, eventually they're going to be like, whatever. Right? Even if they're very patient. <laughs> we hear, see a similar wording here in Hebrews chapter 3. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says today, if you will hear his voice. Because he's talking to them. He's telling them just the same thing he told them back in Numbers. Do not harden your heart as in the provocation. In the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works for 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and have not known my ways. Was it because God wasn't telling them his ways? No. So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you, in any of you, an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Did Israel of old know who God was? Yeah, sure they did. Right? He saved them, led them out. Did they believe there was a God? But yet, they were cut off because of their unbelief. And this, he's warning us of the same thing too. We can have unbelief. We can believe that God is. But we show our unbelief by not listening to him when he talks to us. Because you're saying... Yeah, yeah, I believe, but I don't really believe. Right? Or I believe erroneously. I believe that I can do whatever I want, and you'll just keep forgiving me. I got you, and I can do whatever I want, and it's okay. We shall not sin, so grace shall abound. He's not a God who allows licentiousness, a license to sin. Okay? But exhort, in verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And this is a function of the body of Christ, very much to exhort one another so that sin doesn't take us over. Sometimes that exhortation is hey, calling each other out, right? Not vindictively, but in the spirit of love that, hey, I see this in you. I'm not saying I'm perfect, right? 
Look at yourself first. Take the beam out of your eye so you can help remove a splinter out of somebody else's. Because otherwise you're not going to be heard, right? And help one another. That's what we're supposed to be doing, helping one another and encouraging one another that to hear his voice. If you hear his voice and you have God's spirit within you and you're led by his spirit, how often will you be sinning? Only when you stop being led by his spirit, right? So if you listen to his voice and stay connected, there you go, right? That's, that's the amazing grace that he gives us. And life comes through him. Let's continue Hebrews. Verse 14, For we were, are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to this end, while it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved for forty years? Was it not them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Do not think that we can say, just like Israel of old did, oh yes, you are God, we acknowledge you're God, we acknowledge that you have commandments and all that, and then I don't, we don't listen to you, we don't acknowledge you in our personal lives, don't think that you're going to get in either. And if that scares you, good. And if it doesn't scare you, hopefully it's because you are walking in obedience and you have faith in God that uh, you know, he is who he says he is, and that he will lead you through all things, and not that you're just choosing not to listen, to stop up your ears, like when Stephen was preaching the gospel to those who stoned him, right? They stopped up their ears and they rushed on him, right? Gnashing their teeth. Back into Deuteronomy. Chapter 26, verse 17. You have avouched the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. Now, that's not here, Ken. That's to hearken to his voice, okay? So this is a commitment Israel made, right? Is this not the same commitment that you have made? For him to be your God, that you will walk in his ways, and you will keep his statutes and commandments and listen to his voice. So don't think we're in any different condition if we disobey, because God does not change. He doesn't have respect of persons. Oh, because you call yourself Christians, now I'm going to allow you to do that. Right? Psalm 81, 11 through 13. But my people would not hearken unto my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them up to their own hearts, lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. Don't grieve our Father that same way. He allowed them to walk that way. He warned them. They bore their punishment by walking in the wilderness for 40 years and not getting the promise. The promise which to us represents entrance into the kingdom, eternal life. So that's the true promised land, right? The heavenly country that Abraham sought after. God is reaching out his hands always to this gainsaying people. We have to be ready to listen. And if you're not tuned in to listen now, how are you going to be when times get harder? How are you going to know which voice is his, which is your own, or which is the voice of an enemy or a tear? Jeremiah 7, starting verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk you in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Because he wants our good, right? But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imaginations of their evil heart, and went backwards and not forward. Ever feel like that's happening to you? Maybe it's because you're not 
listening. You think you maybe are. They thought they were still God's people. You could backslide and still be his, but for how long? Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ears, but they hardened their neck and did worse than their fathers. How are some ways God speaks to his people? We see one here. He sent all these prophets, right? All these prophets. We're going to see, uh, we'll touch on prophets again in a moment. What about visions? Some of this may seem a little supernatural, but this is what the Bible says. Uh, sometimes God talks to his people. Habakkuk. I get a point for quoting from Habakkuk today. So, <laughs> and that point is to the Lord's glory, not mine. So, uh, starting in verse 1, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what shall I answer when I am reproved? And the Lord answered me, and said, Write the vision, and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Sometimes when God speaks that way, people think, okay, that's not going to happen. But he says, wait, it's going to come. If he spoke it, it's coming to pass, right? He gives that test, and we'll talk about that when we talk about prophets. He gives that as a test of prophets, how much more for himself. If he speaks it, it's going to happen because he is he cannot lie. Unless he puts a condition on it. If you do this, then I'll do that type of scenario. But in the dreams, uh, as far as I can recall, he uh, it's always what's going to come to pass. So we remember in Genesis God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, you are but a dead man, for the woman which you have taken, she is a man's wife. Right? Remember he took you know, Sarah and, uh, from Abraham? Right? It was this, this is my half-sister. Right? Now, he could have stood up for God and been okay. Now, God didn't write Abraham off, might I say, for telling that lie. It was a lie. It was kind of a truth, half-truth, half-lie. That's a lie, right? Unless it's 100% truth, it's, it's no bueno. Sarah, I can say that, right? Okay, thanks. All right. <laughs> dreams. So dreams. Joseph and Pharaoh, right? Pick it up, uh, verse 15 of chapter 41 of Genesis. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. I have heard say of you that you can understand to interpret it. And Joseph answered for Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh the answer of peace, right? And then drop to verse 25. Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. In verse 32, for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. God says once, yea, twice, right? So and we remember that that was the ears of corn and the, and the cows, right? Same thing, different ways. Now, without the Spirit, you might have interpreted those dreams any different types of way, but God, God does that interpretation, even if he uses a person. God be the glory in all of this. The prophets knew that. And they didn't take, take pride in, oh, I can do this thing. But he does speak in dreams, right? Now, like I said, God speaketh once, yea, twice, Job 33, 14, and yet a man perceives it not in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men and the slumberings upon the bed. Then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man, not from not his purpose, from man's purpose. Take you away from your purpose, take you away from pride, so you obey him. Now, if somebody comes to you and says, I had this dream, and they interpret this to mean something, test it by the word. Because, I mean, there's many false spirits out there trying to deceive. And if they can get you to believe this, then you will end up following that false voice into places where you're not supposed to go. So uh, always test with the word of God. But always, always have a believing heart. I think sometimes we, uh, as God's people, should not be so skeptical. We're supposed to be a people of faith. So when somebody comes to us with that, we shouldn't always automatically shut it down. You know, um, somebody comes to you, uh, for example, with a gift, t saying they have a gift of he healing, don't automatically shut it down as one of the charlatans. There are many charlatans out there, okay? But God is still God, and he still does what he will do. 
and he is still capable of all these miracles. And we have seen some in our church, in the church of God at large. Psalm 62, 11, God has spoken once, say twice they have heard it, that power belongs unto God. God will often reiterate his point so you understand him. And he does that just like we do for emphasis, right? Lots of times. And I got a little list down there of sometimes dreams and visions. And we went over Amalek and Pharaoh and also Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Eliaphaz here in Job and, uh, and Joseph, uh, the husband of Mary, right? By a dream received uh, knowledge of the birth of John the Baptist or uh, of Jesus Christ. So dreams, visions, and then uh, we had mentioned previously the prophets. Hebrews 1, 1, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. God spoke through his prophets. Are there prophets? I don't know. I'm not going to discount it either. Right? How do you know? If they speak according to this word? If they don't, there's no light in them. Don't you believe it? Yeah. Well, it, God has revealed to us so much more with that now that he's given us the written word and that indwelling spirit that uh, I, I think that you, you certainly have prophesied to end time prophets, don't we? Right? Two witnesses. So let's not say that they are, they are gone, dead and gone, right? And God will do, he will raise up who he will raise up. And you don't, you don't, it's not like God who's omniscient and omnipresent. You don't know what's going on elsewhere in the world and who he's raised up for what, right? And brethren, there's some great things that happen in the church of God. I think sometimes persecution brings on some of those great things because your faith is tested and tried. And other places where um, people uh, just have a greater faith. I think we have it actually harder in this country because we, we just like Israel, we're, we're blessed and we have, uh, you know, we grow fat and dull of hearing. So... Um, I, I think lots of times, you know, that those blessings don't come because of those things, too. But that's how God deals at, at, at country levels. But he also deals with us as individuals. Well, there could, there could come a prophet. Now, I'll tell you this, too. If a, a brother has the Holy Spirit, you should always consider this when a brother or sister talks to you in the faith. If they have the Holy Spirit and they are speaking according to the word or not against the word you should hearken you should listen and take take that a little more seriously than answering flippantly because you are answering to god not to men okay so be very very careful of that but also the counsel of a brother or sister when needed is a great thing right it can help again if anyone speaks not according to the word don't go there. Prove it and test and prove everything with the Word of God. Okay. Now, there's going to be some areas that aren't outlined by the Scripture. If they're not sin, not blatantly sin, then there may be choices to be made. And you can help a brother there, but if those choices consist of, hey, this isn't sin and this isn't sin, you have some, some leniency in that choice, right? All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Which means, yeah, this isn't really a good decision. Even though it's not sin, it may not bear as well. Right? And counsel from a brother or a sister is a, is a, is a very valuable gift because it's, it's, based, it's from God. Coming through the Holy Spirit. Now, brother or sister, if you are approached for counsel, you best be prayerful. And you best be walking in his ways lest you condemn yourself in your judgments and in what you speak to others. Okay? So be careful. That was ad lib by the Spirit. I didn't mean to, to, to jump into all that. Um, Numbers 12, 6. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak to him in a dream. So here you got visions, dreams, and a prophet all involved. Right? Verse 7, my servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him, I will speak mouth to mouth, face to face, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And in the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. He's going to get to see some shape. 
Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Again, be careful what we speak against one another. One, we are not each other's enemy. The enemy is the devil and the world, the, the, those sins that easily beset us. Be careful you're not doing the enemy's work, right? And if somebody has the Holy Spirit, you should be a little more reverent, right? I'm not saying bow them and call them Reverend Jim. Oh, I don't know, Alex. But be understand that when they're speaking to you as according to the word of God, they are speaking to you God's counsel. But be aware there are false prophets. That's like a, a, a bookie or an accountant who has double books, right? False prophet, never mind. Deuteronomy 18, starting verse 20, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord God has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if that thing follows not, nor comes not to pass, that's the thing that the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet have spoken it presumptuously, and you shall not be afraid of him or pay any homage to him. Okay. Next, we're going to take an eye test. Here's my test. I'd like to see who can read this. Anybody read this? No? So, it's a miracle. You can read it. No. <laughs> so this is just a list, and it, I don't expect you to read it all. Yeah. So it's about listening, not seeing. <laughs> so um, this is... Places where people have heard God's voice, be it through an angel, but again, like we spoke about, an angel or through Lord incarnate, through, this is in the Old Testament. Okay, so, and these are, these are just some of the examples. And, he, uh, and you, in them, you will see direct confrontation like he did with Moses. You'll also see dreams and visions and prophets. These are the ways he, he has spoken to men in the Old Testament. Here's the New Testament. It's even more contact, obviously, as God revealed himself through Jesus Christ more fully. Um, all those things, the whole book of Revelation is a revelation of Jesus Christ, right? Told to the Apostle John. God speaks to his people. And sometimes there's an audible. Jeff's still trying to read all that. I think I could read some. <laughs> Matthew 17, 5 through 6. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear you him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sort of afraid, right? So sometimes you hear an audible. Again, uh, I think it's First Timothy 6 that says that he, uh, no man has seen his shape or heard his voice at any time. So understand that these people who represent God is still God's voice. God says, hey, angel, go tell so-and-so this. That's the word of God coming to you, not the word of that angel, okay? Unless the angel speaks presumptuously, right? And then he'd be a lying prophet. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God spoke God's words. And uh, we already read Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, but I added verse 2 here. Has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the worlds. Do you know his voice? Do you stop to listen to his voice? Do you have a hard time connecting and hearing that voice? In John 10, verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So, not to throw anybody into a scare zone, but do sheep who don't hear his voice belong to him? Okay, so we need to be listening for him. Okay, listening for our shepherd. And then, when he calls, we follow him. We follow him, okay? Verse 37 of John 18, Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? 
Jesus answered and said, you say that I'm a king, and to this end I was born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth is hearing my voice. Everyone who is of the truth is hearing my voice. Is it important to listen? Is it important to listen for his voice? I think you see it is. You already knew that, I think. But maybe this gives a little more focus, right? Revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, he told to John the Apostle to record. Behold, chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. What a glorious invitation that is. Do you hear his voice? Or did you hear his voice at one time and now, eh, I pass him in the hallway and say hi on my way out of the house, right? Hebrews 9.14, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? How could you serve him if you're not listening to him? Is it your dead works that are preventing you from hearing him? Question, not accusation. We don't accuse the brethren. We bless the brethren. Right? Let's read John 10 a little bit more thoroughly. Starting in chapter 1, Jesus said, talking, saying, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I'm telling you the truth, I say to you that he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, that same as a thief and a robber. But he that is entering in the, by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, the porter, the door monitor, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes out before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. This isn't the little lamb that Mary had that followed her to school. This is a lamb that, that he's actually a shepherd, and you're going to follow him. We are the sheep. Okay. Very interesting to be tuned into his voice and to recognize and to know that voice. And then also be able to, you have to be able to respond to it. Right? Timely. Don't delay too long. Right? Respond to it. Because there are other voices out there. Jesus continued in verse 5 and said, A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they don't know the voice of strangers. This parable Jesus spoke unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Are we listening to a different shepherd? Or are we listening to the one who leads us beside still waters? Right? To that green pasture. I have a video to play. Let me see if this will work. I'm gonna for you folks online, I'm gonna mute my mic so you don't get a double echo, but it'll play for you, and then I'm gonna play it here for the full. One more time. Oh, 
Okay, I'm back. So you saw how the other voices, the sheep didn't even you know, lift their head up. They knew that was not the voice of their master. What about you? What voices are you listening to? Are you even listening for his voice? Right? Now the sheep trust the shepherd. He cares for them and protects them. And so they're, it's very important that they hear his voice. Right? The rod and the staff, right? You know, he needs the staff to, you know, rescue a sheep that fell down maybe uh, off a cliff or something. And then the rod, though, he uses to, to repel the enemies of the sheep. Right? We stay close to him and listen to his voice. We are in a safer place. I watched another video, and I, I couldn't find it. Uh, and if I did, it was longer, so I, I wouldn't have put it in here. But um, it was about uh, actually a shepherd um, in uh don't think it was Israel, but it was, um, I want to say it was uh, in the middle, uh, the middle Europe area, that they had the, showed the shepherd bringing his sheep along the country roads. He was taking them, you know, some into market. And he, they followed him, listened to him, crossing the street with him and all that stuff. And he brought him and he put him into a pen. And then other shepherds were doing the same thing bringing their sheep, and they were putting them in the pen. So now you got the mixed, all these flocks mixed. And then, when, and then as the shepherds were ready to, after they were done for the market for that day, and they were ready to leave, the shepherd would call his sheep. Only his sheep would come out of that pen and follow him home. They each only followed the voice of their shepherd, which I thought was just amazing real-life uh, point. I mean, it, it didn't have to be so exact that Jesus used, I mean, for an analogy, but it, it was very much um, so. What voices do we listen to? What voices are you listening to? Are you listening to a voice that says it's okay to act in a manner unbecoming a Christian at times? That's not his voice. Oh, it's okay if I do that. It's only at home. Other people, church people can't see. That's not his voice, right? The voice that says, do this, but it disagrees with what's in the Bible. That's not his voice. Right? Test it by the Word of God. Test your own actions. Right? Always need to be, you always need to be looking at yourself rather than others, right? It always says, take the log out of your own eye before you can help your brother take out a splinter. We seem to want to be splinter removers well, we got a beam hanging out, right? Take the beam out first. He's given us his spirit so we can walk in his ways. That's it's through that spirit that he speaks to us and he speaks to your conscience. You may not hear an audible. You may not have a dream or a vision or a prophet speaking to you. But he does speak to you if you're willing to listen. Okay? More eye charts for you. Uh, 
Okay. Deuteronomy 13.1. Is among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams that gives you a sign or wonder, and the sign or wonder comes to pass, whether that he spoke of to you, saying, let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not hearken to the words of that prophet, because it wasn't according to the word, right? Or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is proving you, testing you, to see whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So when you have a temptation, it's not because, uh, oh, you know, God must you know, deliver me to this so I can do this thing. It's to see if you love him and you're going to obey what you already know. Never have somebody come to you and say, brother or sister, I don't know if I should, I should do this thing. I, I can want to do this thing. And that thing is expressly spoken against in here. And they're even asking you, why are you asking me? You know what it says. You know the answer is already. You're asking me so you can ease your conscience into that. You're, you're listening to the wrong voice. Okay. Drop into the bolded part. That prophet sometimes, he says to put them to death if they're found because they, they, it was that tragic for his people because that prophet was trying to turn you away from the Lord your God. All the forces in the world against the Holy Spirit in you are trying to turn you away from that voice. Don't think you aren't in a battle. It's a spiritual battle, and it certainly isn't it with one another. i got a note here. I'm going to read it. In Psalm 81, 11 through 14, we read a sad saga of a people who wouldn't listen to God. From this psalm, we read that the nation of Israel did not listen to the counsel of God. They tuned him out and followed their own stubborn hearts. God told Israel through his commandments not to bow down to other gods, but they did not listen. Oh, that ties to the Duke. That's why I have the note here. Instead, in 1 Kings 17, 12, they said they worshipped idols, though the Lord said you shall, and you know what happened to the northern kingdom as you know, a result right, in Israel. In uh, around 720 or 722, they were destroyed by the Assyrian army. Because they didn't listen to God, God allowed that enemy to defeat them, right? If you are experiencing defeat and not victory over your battles against your flesh, against sin, and that's the war you're supposed to be fighting, it's because you're probably not listening to him and God's giving you over. Or you're not calling on him to fight the battle for you. Remember, when Israel went into battle, if they went out without the ark, they got slaughtered. You cannot do it in your own strength, but you certainly can do it because he told you to do it. He said, go slay those giants. Ours is not to wonder why, ours is to do or die, right? Obey the Lord. Back into John 10. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. As the Father is knowing me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Many times we miss out on hearing God's voice because we don't realize how he speaks. And these are some of the, the ways, right? Through his word. And I had mentioned this briefly, right? Many Christians want God to speak to them, but they haven't already taken the time to find out what he already said. Well, I'm thinking of leaving my uh, wife because she's a... What, have you read this? God's already spoken. You know his judgment. Walk in it. Right? God's already spoken to you. His words are written down for you even. A blessing that our forefathers didn't all have. And maybe that even makes us weaker because they had to rely on their prayer. And maybe that's why sometimes in, in this country I see weakness in our prayer. If you're just praying in the morning and praying over meals, you're missing out on a great relationship. If God isn't as real to you as anybody else here in this room, pray for it. Pray for it. When you go into prayer before reading your Bible, he can make the words on the pages just come alive 
And I think you all know that. You've all experienced that. Maybe not all the time, but you certainly have at times. He could speak to you about the unique situation maybe you're facing today through something that happened thousands of years ago. Yeah, he's that good. Yeah, he's that good. He does speak through other Christians. And like I said, that's a tricky one. It doesn't mean, because God does speak through other Christians, it doesn't mean that everything another Christian says to you is a word from God. And you need discernment to understand that. Prove it and test it. Right? Be ready to believe. We should always have a willingness and readiness to believe, especially one another. Speaking that we have the Holy Spirit, we should acknowledge that that could be the case. Now you prove it. And just because maybe a brother gives you bad counsel, that doesn't mean he's not a Christian either. Realize that. That could be a test for him or for you. Okay? So be careful also in, in, in our judgments. God does often confirm his word by repetition. If you've only heard a message once, maybe it was a special word. But if you're receiving that same message over and over, chances are God may be speaking to you through one of his chosen vessels. Again, it has to match his word. You can always pray and ask God to confirm for you. But yet if you're not listening, turn, attuned to his voice, you could pray that and be going, okay, well, I might as well just flip a coin. God, two out of three. Gideon and the fleece. Right? You have to know that when we pray, God said that Jesus told us that he hears us. And anything we ask in his name, he will do. So you have to, when you pray, you have to pray believing. Sometimes we pray begging. Well, I don't really believe this, but I, Lord, please help this thing. You know, whatever's going on. Right? Pray with faith. Ron spoke about faith last week, and I hope that sank in. Right? Prayer is definitely the tool of faith. He says, what you ask for, you will receive, right? And if he says no, be okay with that, right? So there's a few kind of listeners. We're going to spend just the next couple slides going over this, and they'll kind of prep us up for our next uh, session. What kind of listener are you? God still communicates with us today, and we need to be willing to listen to him. So I'm going to break it up, and you can do it in many different ways. I'm going to break it up into four different kinds of listeners, okay? You, you can compare it to the four soil types in the parable of the sower, if you will, okay? The non-listener. The non-listener doesn't even pretend to listen to God's Word. And you might even notice them in church, right? When the preaching starts, they tune out, and they became indulged in self-pursuits, keeping themselves entertained, or complaining inside themselves how they wish this was over so they can go do what they wanted. They often tend to view church gatherings as a mere social club or that they're putting in their God time, deceiving themselves that they have a relationship with the Lord when they do not have one. Hopefully that's not any of you. Jeremiah 13.10, This evil people which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them, shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. Remember the girl they buried in Zechariah 7.11, but they refused to hearken and they pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Acts 7.57, and they cried out, this is about Stephen again, they cried out with a loud voice, they stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. A good word of advice to this type of listener is Proverbs 8.33, hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Why? How long will you kick against the pricks? Right? Then there's what I call the passive listener. The passive listener does not come to services to hear what God has to say. For example, the passive listener comes to a church service or Bible study and never gives a second thought to what God is saying to him through the teachers and preachers. Oh, this is about somebody else, or that was a good story. I know for a fact that some people who come to worship on Sabbath are not Christians. Oh, yep, yeah, be it known, just because you come to church on Sabbath doesn't mean you're a Christian. You may be one of them that are none of his because you're not listening to his voice, right? Be careful. But week after week, they hear passages that urge them to give their lives to the Lord, 
and they don't respond. Why? Because they're not listening to God. They tune him out and they tune out his word or they think, I'm already arrived. Right? So what happens to those who will not listen to God's word? There's a big warning in 2 Thessalonians. 1, 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some scary. So you can see how you got to, you can line these up with the parable of the soils, right? Very much. And then you got the selective listener, right? The selective listener listens only what they want to hear or what they already believe. They're not willing to have those things challenged and test and prove things. Or maybe they think, I already proved it, you know? And they're not willing to see if it stands the test of time. Right? Some people believe that all you have to do to be saved is to believe in Jesus Christ. Well, the devil believes and he trembles. However, when it comes to repentance and baptism, they might not think it's necessary. And we had run across some people who believed that, right? But Mark 16, 16 says, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. This is an example of a selective listener. They listen only what they want to hear. The person who thinks they know it all knows all they're ever going to know. Right? And, and you run across and pray for them. I'm not saying that, that demean any of these folks, right? This is where we go into action, we who have the Spirit, and pray and we compare with the Word of God and test them, right? As Christians, we can't pick and choose what we like and don't like in Scripture. We have to be in submission to God's teachings. Second John 1 9, whosoever is transgressing and abiding not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. Period. If you're not Abiding in the doctrine of Christ and you're transgressing, you don't have God. You need to get on your knees and repent. But he that is abiding in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. And then as we have quoted uh, many times, Isaiah 8.20, to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. Then you'll have what I would call the aggressive listener. The aggressive listener comes seeking to diligently hear and do what God says. Often with a pen and a notepad, not always, right? And you know, like the ladies often do a lot of that describing. Some men do, but I think that's a great practice. That's not a measure of if they're, but they're, they're, you know, they're at least listening, right? But I think it's that hunger for God is what I'm talking about. You know, as we often talk about around atonement, about hungering and thirsting for Him, like you would for food, right? They, the aggressive listener. They want to know. They want to know if what they're doing in their life is right or wrong. And if it's wrong, they're willing to change. They're ready at the drop of the pen to, to change. And they're accurately depicted by uh, Acts 17:11 when he speaks. Uh, Paul speaks of the Bereans. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and then searched the scriptures whether these things were so. And that's kind of like what I was talking about when you get counsel from somebody. Receive with all readiness of mind, but then search the scriptures and prove and make sure it's right, right? We're given God's grace, but we're also given his word, and we need to be able to make sure that we're comparing those things. Uh, Jesus said, talked in Matt 7, 24, about you know, building the house on the rock, and he said, therefore, whosoever is hearing these sayings of mine and doing them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on top of a rock. If we want to live godly lives, we must listen to God's will and put it into practice, right? The Bible teaches that if we listen and obey God, we're going to be blessed. On the other hand, if we don't listen, we're going to be cursed. Uh, for your um, record, uh, Deuteronomy 11, 26 through 28, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. I think the aggressive listener listens and asks, how does this apply to me and my life in every situation? Does God communicate with us today? Absolutely he does. He primarily speaks to us through his word. Right? If, if it's not according to that word, there's no light. Don't listen. But if it's to this word, he's going to give you the ability to listen and understand it through that Holy Spirit. And at times, he communicates through that Holy Spirit. And the more you are listening to the Holy Spirit, it's going to become more... You will be listening to the Spirit more than you're even reading the Bible. 
Right? Abraham didn't have one of these, but he was attuned to the Spirit. Paul had his scrolls wrapped up somewhere, right? But he was still attuned to the Spirit. Hey, the Spirit saved me not to go into Asia. He was listening. Doesn't say he heard an audible. The one time he saw a vision of a man, right? From Macedonia, in Macedonia, right? But not always. Have you been listening to God lately? Are you just going through the motions at church? Or in your life? Listen to God every day. If you haven't been listening, you ought to be. Most of us have two of these. They're so we should listen twice as much as we speak. Right? Listen, because God may be trying to tell you something very important. And all those things you're trying, and the, 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 the machinations of your own devices trying to, to do something, He may have that answer for you already. Are you your own master? If you're baptized in Christ, are you your own master? Okay, so do you take orders from yourself or from their king? Okay, then you've got to be listening for him. You're not on some outpost where he's not reachable. The well, scripture says he's near unto you. Right? We started out in our journey with the Lord by listening. That Holy Spirit, I think, leads a person along from the outside at first, calling you in, right? Jesus said, no man come to the Father, you know, come unless the Father draw him, right? And the Father said, nobody comes to me except through Jesus Christ. And they say in James, if you draw near to, to him, he will draw near to you, right? So there's a mutual drawing there, by the way. Some people just say it's a one, the one-sided call. But that call goes out to everyone, but only some people respond. But when, that, when you're first hearing that voice and you're not converted yet, you haven't been convicted, you haven't repented, you haven't been baptized, that spirit's on the outside of you leading along the way. And we've counseled folks on this before too, that you know, I, and they're, having, they're struggling more and more with sin. Well, they're doing it in their own strength. But when they're obedient to what they already know, Boom, okay, I'm supposed to repent and be baptized. Now, with the Spirit inside them, they're going to be able to tune in and hear that voice a lot better and recognize that voice for who it is. And then, if they're obedient, they get blessed even more. I um, often tell people when they're first baptized, too, that to be cautious because uh, you, know, you thought the devil was out to get you before. Now he looks at you and sees God the Father and Jesus Christ. So you're on his number one hit list. Jesus was baptized, and then came the temptation. So many of folks after they're baptized, believe me, that's when Satan's going to attack. I do believe he's bold and wise and all that. I also believe he's kind of cowardly, and uh, he's gonna, he, he'll cherry pick you, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to pick off the weak and then the young, and that's why we need to be able to have the flock, and listen to the shepherd to guard us from those things. So always need to be tuned in and listening. As you grow in your faith, here's a tendency, though, for some of us. We start to rely on, all right, I already know that, so we start to rely on ourselves. And we stop listening to him. And that is a drastic mistake. We need to tune in to him. Be pre prepared to listen to him. If you have to go and wait through a, in, in a cave for an earthquake and a fire and all that kind of stuff like Elijah before you hear that small voice, then do it. I think that's another thing. Jesus always withdrew himself to listen to the Father and to pray. Do we? No, nope. we pop in the car, hit in the car and we hit that CD player or whatever, you know, an uh, MP player or whatever. There we go. Nothing, no downtime, right? We're busy, busy, busy. Yeah, being under Satan's yoke, busy. If Jesus thought it was important, who came from the Father and had no sin, thought it was important to stay connected to the Father in that way, what about you? Every one of you needs fellowship, but every one of you also needs that alone time in prayer with God. And if you're not getting it, I believe that, uh, one, you're, you're missing out on some great blessings. 
And two, you're not going to be fulfilled as a believer, as a Christian. It's something He promises you. And if you don't listen to the Spirit, why would you complain if He takes it away then? Right? So be cautious, be careful, but be, of, of all things, be, be jubilant, be joyful that He does talk to you. He gives you His Spirit. And if you haven't been hearing the voice, brethren, get in the Word, get in prayer, get in small groups, if you will, and take counsel, and talk to, talk to one another, but talk, take that time and talk to Him. But be, again, one mouth, let your words be few. Heaven's His throne, earth is His footstool. So let our words be few. Be per twice as ready to listen to Him. Sometimes we'll go, um, you know, and we'll already have a predetermined outcome. Well, I'm going to pray, but this is what I'm going to do. Be careful. That's your will be done, not his will be done. Okay? And that takes self-control. But he gives you the spirit that you can do all these things, and you can follow him. But it takes practice listening. Uh, I mean, I know for myself, you know, in, in my line of, of work at, at, as, as a, a people leader, I have to listen, and I was very bad at it. Well, I probably all caught up in myself, right? And then things happen where I realized, man, that's uh, that's not good. I got to change. And so I practice active listening with them. And it, there's an exercise to that. You can do it. Sometimes it does take that time to get away. You avoid the distractions. There's a real-life example of this thing. Somebody comes to your door, you're working on something on your computer, and you just keep typing away while they're talking, maybe look up. All right, that's not listening. So listening, close that sucker, right? Look at them in the eye, talk to them. Or better yet, rise up, meet them at the door. Maybe you've got to get back to your work, but you're going to listen while you listen, while you're really listening, listen. Or while you're listening, pretending to listen, really listen. Okay? Listening is important. To people, right? If you never listen to one another, the other one's going to stop talking to you. Right? I'm, why bother? He never listens. Why bother? She always just talks over me, right? All right, so take that into your relationship with God. Be ready to listen. He will speak through his word. Read believing. Read and read prayerfully. Pray before you read. Read it prayerfully and then pray again when you're done. Or what did I read? Is there anything here that I could, that applies to my life? Or does it, I mean, give me more knowledge of you, at least? Something along those lines. And it may be hard when you're in Chronicles or something, but there's still some things there. You never, n never discount any of, any of God's Word. It, it, it's amazing what you can, you, you can find that will build you up. But have ears to hear. I pray that all of you strive every day to listen to God and to follow God. And that's all I have for you today. See you again in two weeks for Listen Up Part 2. Brian is uh, speaking next week, I believe. Yeah, okay. God bless you. I'll turn you back over to Kevin. Uh, we, have, we have a uh, camera request. We're trying, to, we're trying to fulfill. Yeah, that's not even working. It's not working, Ron. Did you take the batteries off? Kind of line. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> Sorry, Ron, we couldn't fulfill that request. Okay, okay, everyone, stand in front of the camera. Yeah, we're going to get over here, right? That's a lot of us. Yeah, that's right, that's right. There we go. What up, dude? What up, dude? Away. All right, while we're cameraing around here, we can, oh, I got it. Oh, we can get ready to sing some more. Yeah.
Oh, there we go. Good thing you don't play that helicopter there, Brian. <laughs> He's going blindly at it. This is okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's sing some more, everybody. <laughs> That's funny. All right, now let's uh let's grab our hymnals now, and let's sing with faith. Let's turn to page uh 133. Wonderful words of life. Yeah, for yeah, page one thirty three, right? You should sing them over again. Yeah, sing them over again to him. Jesus said that his words are spirit and they are light. So let's sing about the wonderful words of life. <laughs> so much for the message given today. Uh, Father, help us not to uh, squash that spirit uh, that, that you speak to us through. We thank you for giving us uh, your spirit that we may hear your voice. We thank you for your wonderful words that we have that have been preserved through the ages that we may read them and know who you are and have them at our ready, to have them in our mind, that you speak to us through your word. And we thank you for that. It corrects us and helps us to go the way that we should go. So, Father, continue Lord, to uh, put uh, your grace upon us all, that we may glorify you through our actions, our words, and our deeds, that we may repent and turn from our sins and, and show the world uh, who you are through our actions. So, God, we, God, we thank you and we praise you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Get the record off.